Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic polynomial. Not just an ordinary cubic polynomial, but it's actually a parametric equation, an equation with parameters. Meaning that if I change the values of a and b, then I will be getting different cubics every time. So this is going to be a family of cubic e equations, which is obviously much harder to solve than a non-example. Uh, or none of this type. So, how do we solve this problem? If you want to use the cubic formula, be my guess, but I'm guessing it's going to be extremely painful, and I don't think I'm ready to take that. But if you wanted to go about it, you could do the following. You could basically take this, and by the way, I'm going to introduce two methods besides this one. This is just uh, the cubic formula. I just want to show you how painful that can be. So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this into something like this. m plus n cubed minus 3mn times m plus n equals m cubed plus n cubed. This, uh, this should be a well-known identity with cubics. If you expand everything, you'll get the idea. But the idea here is basically replacing m plus n with x. And then we'll get a cubic equation that kind of looks like ours except the coefficients need to be adjusted. And that's easy to do. We can go ahead and do the following, compare these two equations, and then go from there. Notice that the coefficient of x here is 3mn with the negative. Here it is a squared plus b with the negative. So if you ignore the negatives, we're going to get the following. 3mn will be the same as a squared plus b, and m cubed plus n cubed would be the same as negative ab. Awesome. From here we can solve for mn. mn equals a squared plus b over 3. And then we can cube both sides to make it a little easier on ourselves. And then we're going to get something cubed. We can take care of that later. But now this becomes a nice system. And it's actually quadratic because you can go ahead and replace m cubed with negative ab minus n cubed, and then plug it in here, and you'll get a quadratic. Let's see what that looks like. And then you're going to go ahead and distribute. That's going to give you negative n to the 6. Let's put everything on the right-hand side so things become positive. And this is what we get at the end. And then I want to set n cubed to k so that I can get a quadratic k squared plus abk plus a squared plus b over 3 cubed equals 0. And this is a quadratic. You can use the quadratic formula and then find the value of k, which is n cubed, and then cube root it, take the conjugates, add them up, and good luck with that. So let me go ahead and present my first method. This is just too painful. But yes, it can be done. It's doable. It's not super bad, actually. So first method is going to... Um, look like the following. We have, and let me rewrite the equation. Maybe you didn't make a copy of this problem somewhere, so you, it's hard to follow, right, when you don't have the problem. Okay, so here's our cubic, and here's my first method. I want to turn this into a quadratic, and some people are like, what? Are you serious? Are you out of your mind? And it can be done. You know why? Because we have a squared. And that's actually awesome. And this is an Olympiad level problem. Uh, you know, even though I came up with the problem, I think. I don't think I've taken it somewhere else. But anyways, this is actually truly be, can, can be called a math Olympiad problem. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and distribute. First distribute everything. And then put everything on the uh, right-hand side. Uh, while uh, putting this first, xa squared plus ba, oops, that's supposed to be a minus ba, because this is positive here, it's going to be negative on the right-hand side. And then we've taken care of this, and then I will go with bx next, because that's going to be positive, and then finally minus x cubed equals 0. Yay! This is a quadratic. If you don't believe that, take a look at a squared real hard. You'll hopefully notice this is actually quadratic in a. Okay? Great, so we can solve it, and we're going to treat x as a constant, because if 
this is quadratic in A, then X is a constant. And of course, B is a constant too, right? So let's solve it using the quadratic formula. What does the quadratic formula say? The almighty quadratic formula says uh, the negative B, the coefficient of A, in this case, actually, it's really negative B. So it's kind of nice to B or not to B. So that's going to be a uh, opposite of that, which is B, plus minus the square root of B squared. That is actually B squared minus 4A, which is X, 4AC. C is BX minus X cubed. Did I say X cubed and I wrote A cubed? Yeah, that's what we usually do. And that is divided by 2X, which is the coefficient of A squared. All righty. Now, what do we do with this? Something awesome is going to come out of this. But to be able to do that, let's go ahead and take the discriminant out. Discriminant is delta, by the way. It's, it's what determines the nature of the roots. We have whether we have two real roots, one real root, or no real roots. Okay? So it's important. So this can be written as b squared minus 4bx squared for bx squared plus 4x to the fourth. And why did I say this is awesome? Because this is a perfect square. And isn't that perfect? Like, think about it. This can be written as b minus 2x squared squared. Check it out. 2ab checks out in the middle, so on and so forth. So this is awesome because now we have a perfect square. When we take the square roots, it's going to be all good. So now let's go ahead and write a b plus minus. Since we're square rooting this, the square is going to cancel out. So we're going to end up with this guy in parentheses and it's going to be divided by 2x. I know this still looks a little confusing, but guess what? It's going to simplify a great deal. So now we're going to split it up into two solutions, b plus b minus 2x squared divided by 2x. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is 2b. Yay, I got what I was looking for. 2b or not 2b minus 2x squared divided by 2x, and everything can be divided by 2, so we can kind of simplify it like that. Let's leave it at that. We'll get back to it. Let's look at the second solution. It is the b minus b plus. Be careful about the negation. Divide by 2x. b cancels out nicely. The 2 cancels out nicely, and the x cancels out nicely. Everything cancels out so nicely, and we end up with a equals x. And isn't that great? I think it's beautiful. So now we got two solutions, but remember, we were trying to solve for x, not for a. But x was cubic, a was quadratic, so we went for the lowest hanging fruit. Okay, so now we can go ahead and convert it, though, no worries. So let's go ahead and write this down. a equals b minus x squared over x. Cross multiply b minus x squared equals ax. Put everything on the same side, make the x squared positive, and we're going to get the following. Awesome. This is what? A quadratic equation again. A quadratic whose roots contain a quadratic. That's why it's beautiful, in my opinion. You may uh, agree or disagree. And x equals a would be the other obvious solution from here because a equals x implies x equals a. Duh. So now we got two solutions. So what? We're done. Yay. Awesome. Beautiful. But actually we're done, but we're not done because uh, we, have to, we still have to solve these. x equals a is a solution, but this is an equation, right? Come on. Well, we can easily solve it. Quadratic formula comes to the rescue. Negative a plus minus the square root of b squared or a squared minus 4abc, whatever. That stuff, I should probably not use a's and b's for this because it's very confusing, but get used to it. Divide by 2. So we got three solutions. Yay. And those are the solutions to the cubic. And remember, it's a cubic, so there should be three solutions. I'm going to go ahead and present the second solution, but it looks like I don't have any room because the graph just hit me real hard. So what I want to do is I want to start here, if you don't mind, and change this real quick. Just do something real sneaky and solve it with the second method because second method is super duper awesome. Ready, set, go. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do for the uh, second method. We're going to expand it. And then I, why didn't I think of this before, right? Well, we've done it before, but we did it for a different purpose. We kind of put everything on the same side, right? Uh oh, look at that B, such a bad B. Okay, good one. So now, here's what we're going to do. We expanded it. Couldn't this be factorable by any chance, like by grouping? Let's give it a try. Pretend you don't have any idea what's going on. 
Take out x, x squared minus a squared. Take out minus b, x minus a. Difference of two squares, x plus a, x minus a. You got a common factor, my friend. We're all good to go. Take x minus a out, distribute this, x squared plus ax minus b. Yay, success, so easy, right? Okay, well, things aren't always that easy, but this one was. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. I know it's uh, taken a long time here. This is the graph of our equation and notice that these are our solutions. Look at the x coordinates and this is a cubic. Yay for different values. Of course you can play with this in Desmos. You can slide it so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then be safe. Take care and bye bye.